Hello everybody and welcome to the War Room. This one is for this weekend's middleweight main event. Sean Strickland taking on Abbas Magomedov. Okay, I'm interested in this fight. I'm interested in this fight for a few different reasons. And you know I'm a little bit critical of Sean Strickland's style. I'm not particularly a fan of it. Aesthetically, it's not particularly pleasant to watch. But it is very effective. And and as a as an analyst, I have to respect the effectiveness of this style and how it could potentially be problematic for someone as technical and as well-rounded as Abbas Magomedov. Um, before we go any further, I've got to give a shout out to our wonderful sponsor for this show, um, Elion. Elionparis.com. Go and check out their stuff. They do beautiful equipment. Look at those. These are the new gloves that Veronica's just got ready to start punching me in the face at next training camp. I got some new focus mitts, and these gloves. I've had these for a while. When uh, when Veronica was heading out to Paris, she said, "I'm going to see Elion. Is there anything you want me to pick up for you?" I'm like, "Get me these gloves. Get me these gloves." I watched them. I watched people use them a few times in Muay Thai and, and kickboxing fights, and just desperately wanted a pair to add to my collection. They have amazing stuff. They've done collaborations with uh, Dragon Ball Z. They've got a few more collaborations coming up, which I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give away right now. But they've, they're doing really, really cool stuff. Their equipment is beautiful. Uh, a real attention to detail and quality. So make sure you check them out. Elionparis.com. You will not be uh, disappointed with anything that you buy from them. Their hand wraps are amazing. They've got these like suede hand wraps. They just. They just make your hands feel like rocks when they're inside the gloves. Go and check out their stuff. It really is excellent. And and I've got shorts by them as well. Their Muay Thai shorts fit great. They're just, they're just, they're on the money right now. Elionparis.com. Go and check them out. Okay. <clears throat> Sean Strickland, Abbas Magomedov. So quite similar in experience with these two guys. The only real difference, of course, is that Sean Strickland's had, uh, you know, a big portion of his fights in the UFC and Abbas is, is re relatively new to, to UFC fans. Um, Experience-wise, we've got Sean Strickland coming in with a record of 26 and 5, and we've got Abbas Magomedov with a record of 25, 4 and 1. So very, very similar. Now, unfortunately, because uh, Magomedov has only had one fight in the UFC so far, the, the stats are all kind of, they're all kind of, you know, <laughs> they're not very usable for this fight, shall we say. Um, height and reach, of course, you know, Abbas has got a one inch height and two inch reach advantage. But then you look at the rest of their stats, average fight time, Strickland is at 14.26 and Abbas is at 19 seconds based on his fight against Stolzfus. Um, and, and because that fight was so, so short and so dramatic, all of his stats are kind of, you know, skewed 100% striking accuracy 100% defense and 22.11 strikes per minute which of course is <laughs> is a little unrealistic and and you you compare that to Sean Strickland who has a high striking rate 5.76 um that that is a high striking rate but of course you know again the, these uh these statistics are slightly skewed one thing i do want to draw your attention to is 85% takedown defense for strickland which is is a very very good stat and and he's going to need it against Ab abbas magomedov so <clears throat> abbas magomedov is an interesting problem He's he's got a lot of experience. In his own words, he won everything there was to win in Europe and America's his new challenge. And he, and he did come over. He was a part of the PFL roster. He made it through to the championships, to the finals, but then he got knocked out pretty quickly um, against someone that he was expected to beat. To be honest, it was a um, it was a it was an upset, you could say. And and Abbas was certainly shocked. He got caught with a big left hook by uh, uh, Louis Taylor. Anyway. So it was like he was almost there. He almost picked up the million dollars and the PFL belt. It didn't work out. I think he was. I think he went back and had a couple more fights. He went to uh, EMC and KSW. He had a couple of fights, and then then he got signed to the UFC. And we saw what he did against Stolzfus. You know, beautiful measurement of range, front kick up the center, started it, and then just flurried and closed him down. But if if we look through. If we look through the rest of his career, that you know the style of fighting that Abbas Magomedov's got, <clears throat> there are lots of reasons why Sean Strickland needs to be on his on his game and have his best performance. Because, so Abbas originally is from Dagestan. He started wrestling when he was twelve, and he wrestled every day. He said, like I mean, as, as you do if you if you're from Dagestan, you wrestle. That's that's uh, that's your, your, your sport of choice or of. Uh, not necessarily of choice, but he, he wrestled a lot. And, and he talks about this. He, you can see this in his game. When he moved to Germany, I think he was 15 when he moved to Germany, he crossed over and started kickboxing because the level of wrestling was, you know, 
not comparable to Dagestan. And and I feel like I think I think he felt like kickboxing was a new challenge because wrestling wasn't enough of a challenge for him. And as a result, he became a very well-rounded mixed martial artist. And, you know, you can go back into his career. I mean, the, the front kick against those foods wasn't unusual. There's a lot of kicks in this guy's game. A lot of like switch high kicks and, you know, flying stuff. He's very dangerous. He's very long and rangy. He's got broad shoulders and long legs. And he's very slick at the way he kind of brings them up and whips them around. So... This could be problematic for Strickland because of Strickland's style of, of blocking. Now, I've been critical of Strickland in the past. I'm not I'm not a huge fan of his style, but just because aesthetically it's not pleasant. It's not really nice to watch. Like he makes a lot of mistakes. There's a lot of things he does which are which you wouldn't teach someone to do, let's put it that way. But because because he's done more 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 sparring than he's than he's had coaching by the look of it. He's developed a style that works really well. It's like it's almost like when you get someone that you know when they're a kid they they get into street fights and then they go from being have being a kid that does street fights to being a street fighter, and their skills might not be orthodox. They might not be necessarily trained and polished and technical, but because they've been because those skills have been honed in a real life situation, like Sean Strickland's always sparring, because he's always sparring, he's figured out that there's a lot of stuff he can get away with by just being too close to his opponent and him having this kind of wandering guard. Like we've talked about this this cocksucker guard before. This backhand does tend to wander across the centre line and that's how Pereira was able to set him up. But it took a striker of Pereira's level to be able to get to him. And, and this is the... This is the danger of fighting Sean Strickland. And I feel like I would probably do the same if I was like if if I'm right in the middle of my middleweight career in the UFC and and I'm you know I'm I'm expecting big things from myself as as everybody is you know at this stage of the UFC and you call me up and you say okay you're fighting Sean Strickland and I go okay well I'm going to be able to hit this guy whenever I want. And and I feel like this is the perspective that a lot of fighters have when they first step in there with him when they get the phone call and okay you're fighting Strickland. I feel like good strikers look at him and go, well, he's going to be easy to hit. And then you get in there and you start throwing stuff at him and he's kind of, he's he's loose and he's relaxed and he's drifting away and he's catching stuff on the outside of his hands and stuff's not quite landing properly. And you can't, you, you, you kind of get caught in this trap where you think to yourself, well, the next one's going to land and the next one's going to land. Well, but yeah, but he, but he keeps leaning away and he's doing these weird things with his hands. So something's going to be able to get through and you get good strikers with decent power that are committing to shots that are not landing and they run out of time. You know, they, they either run out of time or run out of energy. And Sean Strickland is far more suited over five rounds than than the majority of fighters because then it gives him ten minutes to burn, right? Like you know, you look at his fight against against Imovov, you know, he, he can he can <laughs> he can burn a bit of time if he wants to, smothering him and slowing him down and frustrating him and breaking his confidence, and and breaking his confidence by putting himself in harm's way and not getting hurt. After that point, you know, you, you have you have good strikers who they start to get frustrated because their skill set's not working out. Then they start trying to take him down. And then, of course, the 85% takedown defense comes into play because people are trying to take him down out of frustration and panic as opposed to this is the game plan that I'm coming in here with. And, and I don't know really how uh, Abbas Magomedov is going to pr- approach this. I mean, he's got a lot of experience, but a lot of that experience is outside of the UFC. So... Has he learned the lessons that, say, Imovov learned in his last fight against Sean Strickland? Has he learned the fact that, well, when I'm fighting Sean Strickland, I can't just be reckless and keep smashing the buttons on my on my 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 keypad because I'm going to eventually waste this energy trying to get to him? Is he going to be more tactical and more uh, specific with his delivery? Like, is he watching Sean Strickland? Is he seeing what Pereira did to him? Is he seeing that Pereira was able to draw that hand away from his chin, and that what made him? Uh, that's what made him vulnerable. I, honestly, I don't know. I feel like Magomedov is going to do that work, but I don't know. I, I, that's just based on my assumption of him at this point in his career. You know, he's what thirty fights into his career. He's in. He's at the UFC. He learned his lesson in PFL by underestimating Taylor. I don't know as he's going to do the same thing again. But again, that is an assumption. He might watch five minutes of Sean Strickland and just go, yeah, I can beat this guy. And then that's it. He just focuses on himself. And I feel like when you're fighting Sean Strickland, you have to respect the fact that he is a spoiler, you know? 
he's very good at slowing people's games down. He's very good at walking into people's ranges that are very dangerous strikers and not really getting hurt. And if I'm a striker and I'm I'm teeing off on this guy and nothing's landing cleanly, it's gonna it's gonna frustrate me, but it's also gonna make me feel like at some point I'm gonna land something. I'll get through to him eventually. And then you don't for 10 minutes, and then you start to find yourself getting tired and gassed and that frustration starts to have an effect on your cardiovascular system and then you've got Sean Strickland right on your front foot just peppering you with stuff that you kind of can't get away from. Like, <clears throat> if if Magomedov is smart, he's going to play the range game as best as he can, he's going to be on his bike and he's going to be trying to maintain that range knowing full well that Strickland's going to be walking into his range and he can keep setting him up. But if it does get to the stage where Strickland is too close to him and he is starting to feel smothered, I'm hoping that Magomedov's going to lean on his grappling, his wrestling skills, because first of all, he's formidable in that range. He's got submissions on his record, six submissions out of 25 wins. He's got guillotines is his main thing, but he's also got Rinaki chokes and kimuras. I feel like if he engages his full MMA game, that could be far more uh, problematic for Strickland. But he might just get caught up in a striking exchange. And if he does that, then Strickland could potentially wear him down and wear him down to the point where now Strickland can defend his takedowns because they don't have the same kind of energy as they would have done in the first or second round. A smart and tactical uh, Abbas Magomedov is going to play the range game until Sean Strickland is committing moving forward and then he's going to start wrestling. And keeping that question in Sean Strickland's mind will allow him to faint and bring the hands down of Strickland which will open him up for the head kick like Magomedov is 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 dangerous if he's playing his game right but this is this is where Strickland is a good litmus test for these fighters he's a bit of a gatekeeper in this sense because if you can get through Sean Strickland it shows that you've got uh, an elite level of awareness for the problem in front of you and and sometimes fighters are just not they're just not ready to hit that level yet and and I I would assume with the experience that Abbas Magomedov's got that he's going to have learned these lessons and uh, you know previously in his career and he's going to play this game correctly. But then, you know, like Strickland's last fight against Imavov is a good example. <clears throat> he was just able to weather the early storm and, and 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 get to him. And he could be playing the same thing against against Abbas as well. Now, <clears throat> Strickland, so he's got 10 knockouts on his record compared to 14 on uh, Abbas Magomedov's um record and he's got four submissions um but his last submission was a rainy kid choking his in his ufc debut which of course was a long time ago meanwhile abbas magomedov um after losing in the pfl championships to uh, taylor he went back and had on a couple more fights he got a kimura in the first round on a show called emc and then he went to ksw and he got a second round um guillotine over an undefeated fighter um i'm definitely high on on Abbas Magomedov and his style. There's definitely some skills in this game that can be a real problem for the middleweight division, just generally a real problem for the middleweight division. But Sean Strickland could make him look quite amateurish if he if he if he gets his game going early. If Sean Strickland is respectful of what this guy can do and he fights out of a good defense for the first 10 minutes, then absolutely I can see Magomedov getting frustrated and throwing things that are bouncing off Strickland's wide guard and nothing's getting through and then, you know, he then he starts to choose to wrestle when he's when his confidence and his energy are, are diminished. And then Sean Strickland of course spends the next 10-15 minutes of a 5 minute round, of a 5 round fight walking you down and beating you up and leaving a really strong impression on the judges. <clears throat> if I'm Abbas Magomedov, I'm utilizing my full MMA skill set. I'm using my kicks around the sides to draw his guard away. I'm using my kicks at the center line like we saw against Stolzfus and I'm using my heavy hands at reach to be able to pepper him behind those kicks. Using kicks to open up channels for punches is going to be smart and fainting with punches to open up channels for kicks is going to be really smart. I, I feel like the risk in fighting Sean Strickland is you feel like he's e too easy to hit, so then you just unload without a plan. And, and if we watch Alex Pereira, the point of difference in that fight is that he recognised that there's ways to get around Sean Strickland's guard and it's not with the first punch. It's the drawing the hand away and opening up those channels. And we 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 saw we've seen fighters struggle with that. We saw Kananir struggle with that. We saw Imovov struggle with that. Abbas Magomedov with his experience, with his skills, 
he might be able to find ways around those around the the you know around that weird guard of Str- Sean Strickland. But he's also got the option to grapple and wrestle, and and I, and I feel like that the dual threat that he brings to the table, as long as he utilizes that dual threat and doesn't get drawn into a let's stand and trade with Strickland, I definitely feel like Abbas Magomedov could emerge this weekend as a new problem in the middleweight division that people have not quite realized has arrived yet. I mean, that fight against Olsfus was just so fast that it was like, well, you know, let's see if he does that to somebody else higher ranked. And then they give him Strickland, who, to be honest, and respect to Strickland, he didn't need to take this fight. Like, this is a big a big risk for him. And because Strickland is this guy, he's going to open the door for these young fighters to step in and they're going to step in there with excitement. And, you know, this is where his game is, is a real test for these fighters coming through before they step into the, you know, the top five, top ten. That Strickland test is, is almost necessary at middleweight now uh, uh, in the UFC because if you can't get around Strickland, you don't have the kind of the maturity in your game perhaps to progress to the next level yet. And I feel like Sean Strickland is a big wake-up call for a lot of these fighters. Now, whether Abbas Magomedov needs that wake-up call or whether he's had it previously in his career, that's a different question um, and one that we're, we're going to find out this weekend. What haven't I said? I mean, like we, we know Strickland's style. We know how good at hand fighting he is. Walking into someone's range and tying their hands up can be can be really exhausting. John Jones is really good at it. You know, we see him do that all the time, reaching for hands and like it, it distracts people. It, it it narrows down people's options because you feel like this hand's being tied up. So how hit him with this one? And then it makes it easier for them to read what's coming. You know, you've got to find a way of alleviating the the, the pressure from Sean Strickland. And if I'm Abbas Magomedov, I've got a really, really long jab, even though there's only an inch difference in reach. The, the, the technique of Abbas Magomedov is going to make his arms seem longer. He's going to make his legs seem longer. He's able to deliver them from a further distance. What we've got, one inch height, two inches in reach. It's going to be much of a muchness, especially with Sean Strickland walking into range and just kind of parrying everything he can. <clears throat> if I'm Ag- Abbas Magomedov, I'm going to work my jab, I'm going to feint with my jab, and I'm going to work that low kick as much as possible. I'm going to try and do as much damage to that lead leg, because even though Strickland is quite heavy on his back leg, like Stipe is, and he leads, uses this lead leg to kind of lift up and block and defend, if I can do damage to that lead leg, it's going to slow down his forward pressure. It's also going to open up something that I can use as a feint, so I can feint a low kick and come back up to the head. Or even, you know, feint with a low kick and come with a high kick. Abbas using his whole game to trick Sean Strickland and open up his guard, this is where we see Abbas Magomedov having some real some real success here. And if he's able to utilize his wrestling as well, if he's able to add in some level changes, some clinch work and some ground game against Strickland, whose 85% takedown offense is, is very impressive. If we, if we can see Abbas Magomedov utilize the full mixed martial arts game, then we, we might see how, how formidable of a contender he's going to be in the middleweight division. But if we see him getting stifled in the first round by by Strickland because of how confident and sure um, in his guard and his defence Strickland is, then that could be a different thing entirely. We might see Magomedov kind of becoming a bit unravelled and throwing unnecessarily at a guard that's just catching the majority of what's coming at him. This is the interesting problem when you fight in Strickland. And although I don't find his style particularly pleasant to watch, I don't it's not, you know, it's not an aesthetically pleasing style, you could say. And like, you know, you watch when Pereira fights, that setup that he used, that was just that was just beautiful. I mean, Sad Boussi from last week on PFL was just a beautiful setup for a spinning head kick. There are moments where I go, wow, you know, that's a beautiful technique, set up perfectly, delivered perfectly, brought an end to the fight. Then I watch a Sean Strickland fight and I'm like, you know what? That's really effective. <laughs> it's frustrating and it's effective. And you watch him doing the same thing to people in sparring where he's walking them down and just kind of slapping the hell out of them. And you think to yourself, that must be exhausting. And, and I've, you know, <clears throat> I've made this point. I'm going to say it one more time before we, we wrap, the, wrap the show up. Sean Strickland's style is a bit of a trap. Same as uh, Nate Diaz's style is a bit of a trap. Like you feel like you're getting somewhere, you feel like you're going to land, you feel like you're going to have some success and then you realise that you've run out of gas and this person's still moving forward. They're still mugging you off, they're still calling you on and trash talking you during the fight. And that's the point where it starts to switch. 
and and if I'm fighting Sean Strickland, I would rather fight him over three rounds because then I have less time to stay ahead of him on the scorecards. Five rounds plays into Sean Strickland's hand. If you give this guy 10 rounds, he's going to beat even more people because he's that kind of style. Exhaustion is a big part of his game and he uses his defense to exhaust people both physically and psychologically. So we will see how Abbas Magomedov does because he's got all the skills to do the job, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to do it. And, and you know, you can say the same thing about previous fighters on Sean Strickland's record. I mean, you know, uh, Imovov has the skills to do it, wasn't able to do it. Jack manson has got the skills to do it, wasn't able to do it. Uriah Hall, Christoph Jotko, they've got the skills to beat him. They're just not able to do it because he, he wears them down. He gets to them eventually. So, it's a good test for Abbas Magomedov. If he wins, we've got a new contender in the middleweight division who's definitely worth watching. If he doesn't, then he might need a couple more fights, having learned that Sean Strickland lesson. And, you know, those lessons always do these fighters a benefit. I expect Imovov to come back stronger next time around because you look at that fight and you go, oh, I could have won. I could have beaten him. And I think that's the interesting problem and challenge and trap with fighting Sean Strickland is that I feel like everyone that gets the phone call, you fight in Sean Strickland, they all have the same thought process. <laughs> I'm better than this guy. I'm technically better than this guy. I'm going to be able to catch him. I'm going to be able to knock him out. And then the reality is very, very different. Yeah. It is an interesting case study, Sean Strickland. And and I, and I think that, you know, you've got someone who's refined his skill set and his fighting style by just sparring for rounds and rounds and rounds. And I think he would have been a very different fighter had he have had a very focused coach that was building his skill set. His style was developed almost by default by testing it over and over again in the gym in sparring sessions. And then when he steps into the octagon it looks like an exhausting sparring session against someone that is not on the same level as him if he starts to get his way. It's an interesting one. I'm slowly coming around to Sean Strickland's style, but I, I, I can't yet say that I enjoy watching it. I just appreciate the effectiveness of it. Abbas Magomedov, though, he's got some lethal stuff. He's got some wicked flying kicks and, uh, yeah, a variety of stuff. Utilizing that center channel like he did against Dolsfus, coming around the sides like he, like he did against Sadabusi, they're going to be the things that are going to get through to Sean Strickland. But he has to be slick in his delivery. Otherwise, he's going to be hitting arms all the time, and that will be exhausting for him. All right, enjoy this fight. And make sure you check out our sponsor for this show, elionparis.com. Honestly, I, I, can't tell you, I can't tell you enough how nice these gloves are. And you know I've got gloves. You know I'm a glove collector. I've got more MMA gloves and boxing gloves than any one person would need. And if I'm hitting the bag, this is the pair that I'm putting on. Ooh, they are just... I mean, just buy a pair. You'll see what I mean. They, they fit perfect. They're the right weight. They just... They just snug your hand perfectly. You are, honestly. I'm, in fact, I'm going to go and hit the bag with these right now. Check out elionparis.com. You will love everything that they do. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.